Welcome to Kill You With Truth. Oh, wow. Is that a big <laughs> With my guys, uh, Nate Jackson and Chad Brown. And uh, <clears throat> you guys have any questions for me? How um, was your day yesterday, Jim? Tell us yeah. all about it. It was like a first day at school. My wife actually took a picture of me with like a backpack on, like like we do, like we tortured our kids. And I haven't had a first day of school in a long, long time. So it was awesome. And I got a lot of comments about the good old uh, KUWT podcast, which I, of course, love you guys. And it was just we an important you. part. It was an important part of my life just to get going because, you know, uh, I still have to pay for things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll see where all of this goes. But, hey, people were asking, are you still going to do this? We're still doing this. Yeah, slight, we are. Slight change. Slight change when it's going to air. But we're still doing this. And uh, we're moving forward with everything that we're doing. So I had a wonderful day. Thank you so much for asking. And I was annoying at the abs game. I was interviewing uh, Killer Kowalski, the eight-year-old youth hockey player. I was on the TV broadcast, the radio broadcast, with Rachel Toss and the in-game entertainment. And... Um, the fellow muggles did not approve of one of their muggles, you know, being spotlighted so much, fellas. I mean, that is not where muggles should live. How do you know they didn't approve? Did they did they say, tisk, tisk, what are you doing, D-Mac? Did they look at you like that? Like, what was going on? It was a little bit of shaming um, really? once we all went into the locker room. Like, really? oh, oh, D-Mac. <laughs> D-Mac, I guess, I guess you're done with being on the Jumbotron, D-Mac. I'm glad you could be here. But uh, once we got into the sweaty confines of the locker room, piling over each other to get a word out of Ivan Prosvitov. Prosvitov? I'll get there eventually. Um, I realized I was back at home with the sweaty masses that really are in their place, talking to the superstar athletes like yourselves. I didn't know the muggles were like the Broncos offensive line, where there's some kind of code of what you can and cannot do and what you can say. There's a... <laughs> Is there a muggles code? Is it is it written down someplace? Is there... Oh no 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 no! It's unspoken, Chad. Okay. It, it's, yeah, <laughs> right. you, the muggles. <laughs> but listen, man, it's so funny just being amongst the muggles. Like you just look at us and you kind of <laughs> get it, <laughs> right? I mean, don't you just sort of peek at things and you're like, don't you guys do that to 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 the muggles? Don't you kind of look down and I mean, literally have literally. to look down? Yeah. Right. Real, real, real. Real quick, just for those who are unfamiliar with the term muggles and who the muggles represent, what, what, what is a muggle and who are the local muggles here in Denver so people can get a visual of you guys hanging out? Okay, that's a great question. I am not a big Harry Potter guy, but muggles are like the other people that are part of the wizards. Like, you can only have so many Harry Potters, right? And Hermione's or the redhead guy, I don't know. Like... You can't have everybody be Superman. So, like, when you watch Harry Potter, who are all the other people? Well, they're muggles. They're, they're just people. They're, like, the unseen. They're sort of there. They're like guys in action movies who wear all black that just die, and nobody cares about their families. Brrr, like, there's nine people dead. What's their backstory of person number three dressed in black with goggles on? You just killed them. Somebody's going to be sad. No, 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 no. That's a muggle. Nobody cares. Somebody brought that to my attention years ago, and I thought that was the name for all of the, the media that covers the superstars. You guys, the Avengers, the superheroes. Who are the local muggles? It depends on the sport. If you give me a sport, I'll tell you who the muggles are. Let me ask you this a question. Hockey. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Who's a hockey muggle? Uh, a hockey muggle. Peter Baugh is a hockey muggle. Um, uh, Jesse Montagna, J.J. Perez. Um, it's a lot of, uh, gosh, Ari is, uh, uh, Arif is a hockey muggle, although he's like a really good looking hockey muggle. He's still a hockey muggle. I mean, uh, Terry Fry, Terry Fry, there we Terry go. Fry, there you go, is a <laughs> hockey muggle. That's perfect. Cause I know you know what Terry Fry is all about, who yeah. I love. DMAC, do the muggles need the athletes more or do the athletes need the muggles more? Wow. What mm, a great question. question. Um, Damn, that is a good question. I would say the muggles need the athletes more. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, because but, I mean, because but, if you're looking at it, all right, you go ahead, go ahead, go no, ahead. But, but that's the connection to the public. Yeah. Without the muggles, 
the athletes are going to have a difficult time conveying everything else, and there is no passion for what the athlete does if it's not for the muggles. But, but yes, if there's no athletes, what, what, what's a muggle going to cover? Yeah, what does a muggle do without sports, you know? What is a muggle <laughs> do if there's no game? What does a muggle do on, a, on an off day? I, I, I have no idea. We've had to, we'd have to call up Andrew Mason. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess they just have a lot of strange hobbies. No, he walks around. He walks around grocery store parking lots, putting carts back in their in their cart bay. That's what that's what Andrew Mason does. Now, I'd like to consider myself kind of an. Um, I'm a muggle, no doubt about it. But I was a varsity athlete and a captain in two sports in high school. I mean, I do have that going for me. Like, yeah, are I mean, you that, Jeff Legwalt was not a dominant athlete back in his day. Well, what do you think, Chad? How about Troy? Now Troy Wright could play, right? Troy was a good baseball player, okay. yeah. All right. but, but but Jeff and Troy and me have firmly, later in our lives, stepped into muggle territory. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, Chad could dunk a basketball at 50. 50, Chad could dunk. I can't even imagine feats of strength you can do, Nate, and, and you will continue to be able to do. But to think of me... Jeff Legwald, Troy, Andrew Mason dunking a basketball? How high would the trampoline have to be set up? <laughs> <laughs> we can get an eight-foot hoop out there for you guys. I'm sure you guys can get out. There's no way we can dunk on an eight-foot hoop. Oh, There's shit. zero chance <laughs> any of the people I mentioned could dunk on an eight-foot hoop. Can you touch the ceiling, like an eight-foot ceiling in your house? <sighs> <laughs> no, not standing up. Yeah, ex- you have to jump. For some things I, in sports, I, I, maybe I could, yeah, eight foot, yeah, I, I got that. All right, I, I got, I, I got the, I got the touching. There's no way I, guys, back where we were all fired from, we had that little mini hoop thing at the door. Right. I sometimes struggled dunking on that. <laughs> 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 all right. Anyways, um, yeah, fun night for me and all that sort of stuff. Um, when do you sleep, uh, man? When do you sleep? Because like you know. <laughs> How many hours a night do you sleep? Now, uh, my wife asks me that all the time, and uh, I, I'll, I'll sleep later. I'll, I'll catch up on sleep. Hey, listen, you want to talk about somebody who's grateful for you two? That's me. And this project that we've been working on has been so much fun, and I, I, I don't want it to stop anytime soon. So, um, oh, you know what I realized? I should turn on my lights. Watch this. I got like. Oh, look at you. Now I can see you. I, I just there. thought of that. Ding, that. That is ridiculous. Ding. Ding. Um, when do I sleep? I sleep whenever. Who cares? You know, I mean, this life, it's good to be busy. It's good to have passion. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'm, I'm an empty nester, guys. I have no life. I have, I have do, nothing. Do you think you dream when you're dead? Wow. I don't know. I, 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 I don't really recall, like, the Kennedy assassination. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, it's not really hitting me when FDR and uh, World War II, you know what I'm saying? Like, wasn't I dead then? Right. No, you weren't alive yet. I think oh, there's a difference. Deep conversation. Because dead, dead involves like the opposite of well, nah, yeah, you're right. It is a, it's a, it's a touchy subject. Not touchy, but uh, difficult um, semantically to wrap your head around that idea. Sometimes when I, I, am on my bike and I have a close call, I think to myself, well, if I, if I was gonna be dead, I wouldn't have known that, right? It's like Tony Soprano, you know, you're like you don't see it coming when it happens, and then it's just done. Yeah. Theoretically, if you're lucky and it happens yeah. quickly, unless you can just Well, for that reason, you. would you like to know that you're about to die or would you like to no. die like, in your sleep? No, no, no. Oh, my God, no. No, 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 no. When it's my time to go, make it quick. I don't, I, I don't, don't you think that there's some natural process that happens when you're about to die, some sort of a gland or some yes. sort of secretion or something that's released that makes it not scary, not, not sad, not painful? but actually you're prepared for it. There's like a reserve of some sort of goop that floods your system that, that, that ushers you into the next stage. Chad, we have clearly entered territory. Nate has thought about a lot more than me and you. So I would just- uh, No, turn... no, 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 uh, it, maybe just you. Nate and I have oh. had these conversations many times on air. Then yeah. about, you, you, it, you two talk about it, go ahead. Is there you, a you... blissful endorphin release right before you die that flashes your life in front of you and brings you warmth and joy and happiness as you're drifting off into the next life. We've talked about these kind of things many times. Yeah, you never uh, listen to our show, me? G-Mac. You never listen to you, our show, man. 
Well, Keep I was the only me, one. I was Keep the only up, one. My friend. You tell me then. You tell me what you think, you two. What do you guys think? Um, I think there's some facts that uh, give that some credence. Um, and I don't know, if you've watched any nature documentary, you know, once the antelope is on the ground and the lions are beginning to devour his, in, his innards, um, there's a certain blissful expression upon that antelope's face. They fight for a while, but then they go into this place. So while that may seem harsh and ridiculous, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Right, time out. Sorry, out. sorry to interrupt. Are you saying the antelope gleefully at some point says, "Eat me"? Um, at some point, once the 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 roll of the dice has been revealed, and it is that that antelope's turn. Yes, you can look at those animals a lot of times, and they appear to be in a place of not fighting the whole thing, but of, accept, of acceptance. And again, I'll say even a little bit of blissful, blissful, uh, pain-free few moments before they pass. Death, dude, death makes the world go around. Every single thing you eat was recently alive, and that's why you're able to live, because you're eating dead things that were once living, very recently. And one day you'll be that thing that something else eats to stay alive. Boom. Boom, D-Mac. <laughs> Keep up with the depth. I'll kill you with truth. Yeah, you didn't think this was coming today, did you? Yes. The Avs beat the Blues for the one last night. (laughs) (laughs) The Nuggets got eaten by the Timberwolves. Well, there we go. They lost by a lot. Um, Josh McDaniels got eaten by Mark Davis. Yeah, what do you guys think about uh, Josh? Let's get to that. Let's go back on that a little bit. All right, so I have been a Josh defender for way, 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 There's three times. Too long. Um, Everyone's tried to tell me who Josh was, give me the examples of who Josh has been. And I've always always pushed back. No, no, no. I know this dude. He's a smart football guy. He was trained to be an exceptional head coach. He He coached on the defensive side of the ball. He coached receivers. He coached quarterbacks. He was a coordinator. He spent a year in the personnel office. He did all these things that's going to give him a great jump on off point to be a great coach. And then, you know, in Denver, obviously, it went poorly. So I thought, okay, he's such a smart guy. He'll learn his lessons. He'll learn how to be approachable and how to be a, a coach who communicates well. He'll learn all the personal parts of coaching after doing so poorly here in Denver. And even despite him saying that he was going to be better and he, was, he had it all figured out, he doesn't. He's a guy who does not connect to people. So his time as a NFL head coach, if he gets a third try, that's going to be ugly because obviously there are guys like uh, CU's own Eric Bieniemy who haven't gotten these opportunities, and Josh gets a third swing at it. He needs to go back to New England. He needs to fix their offense up there. That's going to be the best situation for him. Um, But, yeah, this is a guy who has not figured out something that Nate and I talked about so many times when we had our show, that coaching is more than just X's and O's. Coaching is instructing. It's passion. It's teaching. It's connecting to people. It's showing them that you love them. Therefore, Mm -hmm. they're willing to go through a brick wall for you. Josh McDaniels never figured out that personal part of coaching, and now he's washed out even quicker than he did here in Denver. Yeah, you know that um, you know how I feel about Josh because he ended my career here in Denver. I, I loved right, playing right. for the Denver Broncos. I loved being a part of the community. I was playing the best football of my life at that time. I, I knew how to be a good NFL player, good teammate, good locker room guy, <laughs> and uh, and he cut you know he, he cut me without ever seeing me on the practice field. So of course I'm bitter about it. You don't want to hear my opinion, but look what he did to the Broncos organization after I and a bunch of guys left. He burned it to the ground. It was almost criminal what he did there. And then he did the same thing with the Raiders. I mean, imagine what the Raiders went through the year before he got there. John Gruden gets fired amidst an email scandal where you you find out your head coach is kind of a racist. Um, Henry Ruggs, uh, your receiver, kills someone Mm. in a car. Um, There's another dude brandishing a gun on Instagram Live. Um, uh, He gets cut. Rich Basaccia somehow galvanizes this team, brings them along, takes them to the playoffs. They go on the road to Cincinnati and almost beat the Bengals. And how does Mark Davis reward this performance and this coming together from the team? He hires Josh McDaniel, Josh McDaniels, and throws that whole thing mm. down, uh, down the garbage, you know, down, down, <laughs> down the disposal, and turns it on. <laughs> Whatever. I was looking for the metaphor. Um, Josh McDaniels can't connect with people. He's good on the whiteboard. He's horrible with, horrible with human beings. And uh, I hope he never gets another sh- shot at being a head coach. Uh, he probably will someday, though. He'll have a couple good years with 
you know, as an OC, and they'll give him a shot again. But um, I hope Josh McDaniels goes away forever. I don't know why you just didn't say down the shitter. That down been, the uh, shitter, yeah. Uh, down the uh, toilet, uh, yeah. That was that's the appropriate uh, receptacle for what the shit that he's done. Do you feel any personal validation that a guy who treated you poorly has um, failed? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, mm. you know, like when somebody says you're not good enough, and then they and then they go and you know take a shit and and they suck. It's great. Don't you enjoy that, Dmac? When someone fires you and then they end up looking like the idiot? <laughs> I had a good day yesterday, Dave. That's all sure I'm going to say. You I sure did. I had a good day yesterday. You deserve it. All right, it, guys. Uh, we kind of are we're off the beaten path here, but um, always, always fun. Uh, yeah, but I should say, is there anything else you want to just get off your chest? Is there anything out there you just want to sort of just take a moment of? Because uh, I need to let you run free like gazelles that are about to be eaten by coyotes. Does a Kirk doesn't. Cousin injury scare oh. you with the Russell Wilson possibilities of salaries and guarantees and things like that. That's a very <laughs> that is a gr- thing. That is a great question. It should scare the crap out of you if you think you want to move on from Russell Wilson. Yes, 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 it should if you don't believe in him. If you believe in him, then no. So I'll throw it back to you guys. Do you believe in him or not? I'm assuming this is Russell Wilson's last year under center for the Broncos. Uh, for the Broncos. Um, well, then it should scare you. It does. It does. Okay. And this is why I brought it up to see what you guys' thoughts were. <laughs> um, I, I think the future for the Broncos is somebody other than Russell Wilson. Um, I know the, the stats show a certain prowess this year, but the overall numbers of 94 yards passing against the Chiefs on Thursday night, 114 last Sunday, that's not enough to get it done. Everyone knows that. So if that's going to be the performance where it's high percentage passes to running backs out of the backfield, you can get a lot of quarterbacks to do that and for a lot less than a quarter billion dollars. So this Kirk Cousins thing now comes into the picture for this Russell Wilson discussion. Yeah, I agree, man. $50 million a year for check down Charlie, who's going to go 12 for 19 in a game. And like you said, seven of them to a running back. You're overspending on your quarterback. The last three years, Russell Wilson in 2021, six and eight. Last year, 4-11. This year, 3-5, mm. and five, and that's after a two-game win streak. To me, he's not a quarterback that you should pay that much money to, and so I think they will find a way to move on from him unless he takes them on a magical run here, guys, in 2023, and they finish with you know nine or ten wins, maybe make the playoffs. Hey, maybe, like Javante Williams said, Super Bowl, right? <laughs> Super Bowl. Maybe. If they win the Super Bowl, I think he'll stay. That would be a nightmare scenario, but that's not where their mindset is. Their mindset is uh, rejuvenating and getting back after uh, the Bills, which we hope is our next watch along. We got to work on that, but we hope that's our next live watch along. Are you going to be able to? Are you going to be able to do this stuff with us with all your new obligations and all your new friends and everyone telling you how pretty you are and how great you are? The King of the Muggles. Seriously, can the King of the Muggles King of the Muggles himself to hang with us? How is this going to? How is this all going to work out, man? The Muggle King. <laughs> the movie. I'm like Jim Morrison of Muggles. Um, I think as long as we do some um, ayahuasca together in a desert and then go into a dark room without any clothes, we should be all right. All right. Are, you willing, are you willing? Are you willing to get ghee butter blasted up your hoo ha like Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> and on that note, we say goodbye on uh, Kill You with Truth. <laughs>